wizards, how are you? I hope you're doing great today. I know, I know I'm making a video after a month, but... A wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Deal with it, okay? So you know how everyone has that special uh, movie or a special book that they, they read for the first time in their lives and it becomes a really, you know, special memory of uh, uh, from their childhood? Mine is Harry Potter because Harry Potter is the first movie that I ever watched. I was so small because I'm 21 and Harry Potter came uh, a year before I was born. It was so cool. I didn't really understand it because I was so s small, <laughs> uh, but um, I really liked it. So um, maybe two years ago, I started watching Harry Potter again, like the whole series. And I just kept watching it. I kept watching the clips. They make clips on YouTube. I just kept binge watching them. And then um, last month I decided I want to know more. So I just bought all of the books and I read them. This is so cool. I'm just so happy. It was so worth it. And the worst thing about these books is that they end. Anyway, let's just get into the review. first book. My favorite quote from this book is when Hagrid tells Harry, uh, Harry you're a wizard. It just brought back all of the childhood memories that I had. It was crazy. So these books, I got them online and um, they're so cool. And the best thing about this book is, <laughs> look at this, they give you a little map of the Hogwarts. And it's so cool. And the first chapter of this book uh, is um, The Boy Who Lived. And it was so unexpected. But of course it gives closure. It gives, uh, you know, the idea of how everything went when the uh, war ended. When, you know, Harry defeated Voldemort. But um, yeah, the first chapter was really important. And it's just so funny how um, Dudley's parents, they are just so crazy about wizards at that time. Because I thought that they, um, they hated Harry and they were so bad to him because he was a hocrux and um, it impacted their minds. So that's why they were so cranky all the time, but mm, they were always cranky. <laughs> they were just basic a-holes. I think I noticed this that this book is so much similar to the movie unlike uh, the other books but Chamber of Secrets too but this book is so much more similar to the movie and it's so small and the best thing is that when books uh, these uh, Harry Potter books uh, how JK Rowling wrote them it's so cool because when you start reading them when they came out everyone was just so small and this book was uh, it was written for children and every year when you get older the books are in balance with your age that's what I wanted to say anyway the first book I, I loved it I mean this is how it all started and this is so cool no scar no is my little baby scar this is Luna's baby and he was trying to knock my tripod. Why were you doing this, Scar? So, the second book, The Chamber of Secrets. It just, I, I just think that this book is a little bit depressing because it starts where um, Harry has the worst birthday. I feel that Aunt Petunia is such a bee because she couldn't even prepare a cake for Harry or maybe wish him happy birthday. But that's just their character. And then Dobby comes along. See, they have a picture of Dobby. I just couldn't believe that 
Uncle Vernon gave Harry Dudley's second room. It just felt so bad for Harry. He was he was living under stairs and Dudley would bully him. So Weasley was so obsessed with muggles. He was working uh, at the ministry and he was illegally um, bewitching a car and making it um, fly. It was so cool. He is so funny. I just love Mr. Weasley. And you know how um, people say that Harry's and Ginny's relationship, it, even in the books, it doesn't really how it's supposed to be. It's not that pure. Of course, after they start their relationship, they are they have really good bonding. But um, I think that in this book, Harry and Ginny, their relationship, you know. They, I think it started a little because he saved her life. I always thought, why does Hagrid, you know, uh, you never get to see his wand? Because he's hiding it in his umbrella. You know, when he got sacked from um, Hogwarts in his third year, they took his wand and they broke it. But I think uh, somehow he hid it in his umbrella. Finally, he was legally approved to be using a wand. I just love Gilderoy Lockhart because he's probably, he's so funny. <laughs> he's the best character in the second book. I mean, this book is cool. It's still for a child, but I mean, this is so cool. And then I read Prisoner of Azkaban. And I think that this book is much more evolved and it's much more you know, um, for a bigger person. It just starts with all the, you know, how Dudley's are really bad with Harry because he always spends summer with them. In the start of the book, he just runs away and um, with the night bus and he lives in uh, Diagon Alley in Leaky Cauldron. And it's so cool because um, there's this guy who gives him free ice cream. Start of the books, um, it, Harry is like, he's getting things, you know how Gilderoy Lockhart gave him free books and then he gets free ice cream and then he gets gifts and everything and um, in this book he gets a firebolt. It's so cool that Sirius sent him a firebolt and he gets to know that in the end and he gets to make a Patronus which not many wizards in um, the wizarding world are able to produce at such a young age and then he gets to know about Snape and how his father used to bully him and you know how uh, Harry always thought that his father was a really good person but actually he used to bully Snape. He gets to know about um, Lupin's, you know, being a werewolf. He was in the uh, Shrieking Shack. You know how Snape was always following uh, Harry's father and everything to, you know, get something on him? His father played a joke on him. James played a joke on Snape that go to the Shrieking Shack where actually Lupin was hiding at the full moon and he was almost going to die but he got saved and everything and you get to know more about how you know not every person is a good person people have good and bad in them you know how Sirius said that the world is not divided into good people and death eaters and how Crookshanks love Sirius I love that because you know how much I love kitty cats and Hermione's kitty cat just loves Sirius. She is, you know how uh, he was so sick after uh, escaping from Azkaban and she just sits on his chest like, don't hurt him. And then I read Goblet of Fire and this book is huge. It has like 500 pages, but um, the Order of the Phoenix is much bigger. It, that one has 800 pages, but this one, I think it's the best book ever in Harry Potter series. This book is so cool because, and also in this book, Harry is like, he's always so cranky, but I think that's understandable because he's a teenager. He is growing up. What do you expect from a child who is um, going through puberty? The first chapter, 
uh, it's about the Riddle House. Um, you get to know more about uh, Voldemort's origin. Uh, and, it, and it was so funny when uh, the Weasleys came to pick Harry up from the Dursleys how they came down from the chimney and the chimney couldn't open. Vernon was so scared of the Weasleys and he, you know how he hates wizards because Dudley had to medically remove the pigtail that Hagrid gave him. <laughs> And then they go see uh, the World Cup, and then there, Barty, Barty Crouch Jr. he um, produces the dark mark, and it's so cool because you get more detail of that incident. It was just some dumb Death Eaters who wanted to do something out of the blue to uh, show other people that see we are still here, we are not going anywhere, and. I, I think this book is for a, a little bit more mature audience because um, when I read that the Death Eaters were making a, a muggle hang upside down, uh, she was trying to, you know, cover herself up. So I think that because this book is for, you know, um, a very young audience, they cannot, uh, I think, I think J.K. Rowling did not want to uh, tell the young audience that the Death Eaters were included in so much worse things that that are being told in this book. You know how Fred and George, um, they are trying to uh, open the shop with Weasley's Wizard and Weezes and uh, they, I think they're both really intelligent boys, um, Fred and George, because I know that they didn't get enough owls or the blue elves or they did not really care about their studies but they were they invented so much stuff in their school year then later harry uh, when he wins the tournament uh, he gives his money to fred and george and he says that i will jinx you if you don't take this money and uh, i think that's pretty cool I mean, whatever you say uh, about barty crowd jr i know he was a, a very evil person but in this year, especially, uh, Hogwarts students got to learn a lot more about um, dark arts because they got to know about Cruciatus curse and all the three unforgivable, uh, unforgivable curses. And you know, in the movie, uh, both Bux Patterns and Dumbstrang were not co-education. They were in the uh, books. They had both boys and girls in their schools, but it looked pretty cool in the movie too. That's something you notice every day. <laughs> and I, I found it really funny that um, you know how uh, Sirius Black was on the escape, you know, on the run, and um, they used to write him letters and they used to call him Fluffy, Harry Potter and his friends, and that's kind of cool because he's a, a dog. It's so nice how Sirius is always, you know, trying to be there for Harry. Uh, being his godfather and all. It's kind of funny when um, Professor Dumbledore tells uh, Professor McGonagall that go at Hagrid's and there will be a really large dog waiting and you can tell him that he will come and see Harry and uh, Professor McGonagall is like starstruck. She's like, what? What is this person saying? Is he mental? But she didn't know that it was serious at that time. Dumbledore, Professor Dumbledore, Oh my god, in the movie, he is so weird, um, he just shouts at Harry. Harry! Harry, you put your name in the cupboard of the fire. Absolutely sure. And in the book, he says calmly, Harry, did you put your name in the goblet of fire? The movie version was so funny. I just really like how this book is huge and it has so many details. I mean, I cannot talk about all of them, uh, but this book was really cool. I think this is probably the best book in Harry Potter series. Moving on to the next book. This book is so huge. Just see, 
it's the biggest book it has 800 pages and this book is so sad come on guys you know i love serious black he was so cool he was such a friend to harry and then he just he dies Harry just doesn't want to believe it. He thinks that he's going to come back, but he doesn't. And that part made me cry a lot. And you get to know uh, a lot more about Nymphadora Tonks. She's such a cool person in the books. In the movies, you don't get to see her a lot, but in the book, she's so cool. And uh, you know, at the platform when Harry breaks his nose because Draco uh, kicks him in the face, it was not Luna. Who, uh, fixed Harry's nose it was Tonks most part of the book Tonks was so sad because Lupin uh, wouldn't like Lupin wouldn't acknowledge her love or something because she was so young and Lupin was a werewolf and he was so old and he was poor and he wouldn't get enough um, job opportunities because of being a werewolf but Nymphadora oh my god she loved him and she stood by him even though the whole wizarding world hates werewolves they're an outcast and she just stood by him and even their baby boy their son he is just like nymphadora he changes his hair color uh in later on in the books and it's so cool and then i read about percy there's not much about that uh, matter in the movies but percy he decides to separate from his family because he um, loves his job or his minister or whatever i mean he comes back later on and in the book dolores umbridge is such you know you all know what I want to say. Umbridge makes Harry write with his own blood from his hand so many times every single day. It was not just one time like in the movie, it was so many times and it just hurt my heart to know that Harry had to go through so much pain. But then they uh, formed um, the Dumbledore army and they um, used to meet with these coins that Hermione bewitched. And the best part about this book is, even though I hate Cho, in books, in movies, I hate Cho. I do not like her. I love Ginny. I want Harry to be with her. But Cho did not betray the Dumbledore army. It was her friend. And her, uh, you know how everyone wrote their names on a piece of paper? It was bewitched. Hermione bewitched it. And that snitch girl who snitched on these people, uh, on the Dumbledore's army, she got such bad case of pimples and I literally, that made me happy. Dumbledore was such a good person and also he was so cool. How he loved Sherbet Lemon. I just love that every single password to go to his room was name of a candy. Well, I think I could be safe with a nice toffee. Mmm. A lot. Earwax. Anyway, this book is such a good book and it's probably a lot darker. You get to know a lot more about the characters, about everything. You get so much more detail. And then comes the Half-Blood Prince. It's a lot more focused on potions. Harry was so bad at potions when Snape taught. Because Snape would always take side with Slytherins and Harry could never ever get to know a lot more about potions. But then he gets the book of the Hot Blood Prince. For the first time in all his six years or five years of being at school, he's the best in class at some subject. In chapter five, you get to know about phlegm. I mean... Fleur Delacour. She is going to marry Bill, Bill Weasley. You know you get to know more about Bill because he got bit by uh, the same werewolf that bit um, Lupin, Fenrir Greyback. I hate Greyback. He bites children. What's wrong with him? And then you get to know a lot more about uh, Draco because one time when uh, 
Harry went to the girls' bathroom. Myrtle tells Harry that uh, there's this boy who always cries and they bully him and he tells me everything. He says that if he doesn't do something, he's uh, maybe he's going to be killed or something. And uh, she was talking about Draco and Draco is like being bullied by the Death Eaters and Voldemort because his father couldn't get the prophecy in the previous book. And then, uh, you know how Dumbledore uh, gives Harry lessons? You don't even get to see a glimpse of uh, how Voldemort was born or how his family was, where he came from. Voldemort's mother used a love potion on Voldemort's father. That's why Voldemort is stupid. It's a product of illegal magic. Voldemort thinks that he's probably the best wizard of all time, but he is not. And what I liked about Hagrid was, uh, I mean, he was a great character. He was such an uncle figure for Harry. Because he had giant blood, most of the hexes did not work on him. Even when Dolores Umbridge tried to stupefy um, Hagrid, he didn't even flinch. And and when McGonagall came for help, so many, I think four wizards, uh, they stupefied McGonagall and she had to go to uh, St. Mungo's, where Neville's parents are. Oh, about St. Mungo's, it's so funny, I forgot to tell you guys that Harry, Ron and Hermione met Gilderoy Lockhart in St. Mungo's because he lost his mind and in St. Mungo's he was still saying do you want my autograph? Come on, let me sign so many autographs for you guys so you can give it to other people. And in the end, when Dumbledore dies, um, it was just so sad because Harry lost his parents he lost his godfather, and then he loses the one figure he, that he looks up to, Dumbledore, and he lost him too. I mean, you could feel the pain when you read it. Uh, and then they held a funeral, even the mer people, the mermaids uh, that live in the lake that's in front of Hogwarts, they came and they were singing, and even the, uh, the phoenix of Dumbledore, he was singing. Moving on. So the last book. Out of all of the books, this is my favorite book. This one and the first one. Because first one is, uh, you know, how it all starts. And this one is like pure love. <laughs> this is, if I could give a love potion to anyone, I would give it to this book. Even though it's illegal. So at the start of the book, you know how J.K. Rowling dedicates all the books uh, to, to people who are close to her? Look at this. Even the dedications are split in one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven corners. Um, I think I just realized it, uh, but it's pretty cool. In this book, when Voldemort goes to Grind Grindelwald, and uh, he wants to know the whereabouts of the uh, of the elder wand grindelwald doesn't tell him he tells him that there is so much you still don't know i think that grindelwald was a better villain because he had at least brains voldemort was stupid he thought that uh, physically hurting someone is going to, you know, is the worst pain. And then a uh, minister of magic dies, so many people are on the run. The radio that Ron was always listening in the movie, that was Dean. People they knew, even Fred and George and Lupin, they all talked on that particular channel. Everyone was fighting. Even Luna got kidnapped. Ginny did not go back and Longbottom had to uh, bear with all these Death Eaters in Hogwarts because they made Snape the, um, the headmaster. And there is so much more about elves, about Creature. I hated Creature when I watched the movie and in the start of the books I hated Creature too because Regulus was so nice to him, uh, to Creature. He was such a good person. 
he cared about creature and uh, Harry gave him the uh, Harry gave creature the necklace of Regulus bag that was forged and creature was so happy he would wear it around his neck because he loved Regulus anyway at the end um, where the battle of Hogwarts happens creature and all the other house elves uh, that are working in the uh, kitchen they all come holding knives and forks and different things sharp things uh, to fight with the wizards against Vold uh, Voldemort and creature is leading them he's saying fight for my master regulus black it was so cool i just fell in love with creature and hermione she started spew which was like a society for uh, the betterment of creatures other than uh, wizards and um, uh, it was all about elf rights if, you, if i wanted to talk about uh, this book if i started talking about this book I would never stop because this book is probably the one of the best books I've ever read in Harry Potter series in any other books. I this is the best book and I think you guys should read it yourself. I mean, I'm just saying it was worth it. It was so good and like I said the worst thing about these books is that they end and I started reading them because I wanted to you know get more detail and I got it I mean it was worth it it was perfect but the thing is about the whole story of Harry Potter I just want to say that um, when I watched the movies the first time I wasn't thinking a lot uh, I was just you know watching it and I really enjoyed it because it has magic and now reading the books I feel so sorry for Harry I mean it's a really sad story yeah he gets to go to a magical uh, school and yeah he's a wizard I mean that is so cool but the thing is this story is such a sad story there's this little boy who is living with uh, his aunt and uncle who can't even say happy birthday to him they make him live under the stairs then Harry loses his godfather and um, he has to constantly deal with being a Horcrux with the fact that he has a part of Voldemort's soul living inside him how hard would it be he cannot live a normal life there is a murderer who want to kill this little boy and he has to fight all alone because he loses everyone everyone dies well at least he has his friends I mean it's such a beautiful story the whole wizarding world I mean sometimes I think how did J.K. Rowling do this because it's may you know making this world out of nowhere that is actually logical also i want to tell you guys that um i did not get my hogwarts letter and everyone uh, who was uh, who were born during 1998 or 1999 they did not get their letters because um voldemort burned all the records of all the wizards being born in that a particular year so don't be sad you're a wizard but you just didn't get your uh, letter because moldy moldy I'll see you guys in my next video if you like my video please give it a like and share my channel just subscribe subscribe for snake